Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. I'm gonna take you through some of the finer points of tearing off the carpet and deck when you're redecking and adding vinyl. So one of the first things I do, we get everything stripped off. This is down to the carpet. We got the railings off, furniture off, uh, all the electrical pulled. I'm gonna show you a few of the quick tips to save me time when doing this. Uh, starting with just seeing how the carpet's held down. Once in a while, probably one in every 20 boats that we do, uh, the carpet is just stapled around the outside and there's nothing holding it down, no glue, believe it or not. And that's from the factory. So on this, I like to just start to peel a corner and see how difficult it is to come up. It's always gonna be tough around the rub rails or where furniture was, but this is glued down pretty darn well. This is what we talk about all the time when people say my deck is in good shape well yeah this deck doesn't really have any soft spots but when i peel up this plywood is going to be pretty rotten from years of sitting under wet carpet and that's why two layers of plywood came right off with this uh up to two layers of plywood so something to consider that's why we always redeck every boat that we're going to put new flooring on it's just a longevity thing let's do it once not have to worry about it for a long time so since this is really tough to peel up, we're gonna do the trick. If you watch some of our videos in the past, you may have seen it. I'm gonna cut strips about 12 to 16 inches. The whole length of the boat is a 24 foot or big boat. Uh, I'm gonna cut strips so that I can put more pressure into those smaller areas, the 12 inch wide strips to pull it up. If I try to pull the whole thing, even with two or three people, it's not coming. There's just too much glue, too much adhesion, too much surface area that's stuck down. The other thing I'm gonna start with too, that I'll show you after I cut the strips, is we have all this electrical uh, and motor components sticking out of where the console was. So you've probably, again, seen this, we've done a video on it, so we won't spend a ton of time, but I'm gonna take my Sawzall and I'm gonna cut right out about a two inch or three inch slit to drop all this out, just getting it out of the way. That's not how I'm gonna reinstall it. If you're really afraid to unhook everything, yeah, I've seen people cut that slit and then cut it into the new board. I just don't like that. It's a place for rot to happen. It's just a weak spot on the floor. I'm gonna always cut a hole and run everything back up through. But again, if you're really uncomfortable with what's happening under your console, I've even seen it where people have cut and put the console off to the side of the boat. Highly don't recommend that either. But if that's the only thing that makes you comfortable in doing this project, I guess go ahead and do it. So we'll cut that out, we'll cut our slits, and then we'll start peeling away some carpet and get that board exposed so we can show you how we take care of uninstalling plywood. I'm hoping for your sake on this boat that it's one of those troubling ones so you get to see some of our other tactics. Once in a while, it's just self-tapping screws, stainless, and we can zip them right out. That's once in a long, long while. So I hope you get to see how I get stubborn hardware out as well today. helps to have a fully charged battery. But here's that slit I just cut out, and that allows me just to drop these down out of the way. They're just gonna hang here out of the side of the boat until we get the deck on, and then we'll cut a hole where the console is gonna go. It may move, I think we're moving this console forward a little bit, so we may have to swap the steering cable as well. We'll see how that works. Now when this board is ready to come up, I can lift it right off and nothing's holding it down. I got my strips cut. This is the hard work. I'm gonna turn the fan on and try to get this over with as fast as possible. But I'm just gonna pull these the length of the boat. I'll time lapse it so you can see it, but this usually takes a good 30 minutes, sometimes longer, just nonstop, sweaty, dirty, sandy, filthy work. As promised, real sweaty, real filthy. So you're gonna get a mix of dirt, sand, broken down carpet, just a powder that gets everywhere. Let's talk about the deck. Another reason that I'm not gonna take just carpet off and put vinyl on top because I can't promise, remember I'm doing this for customers, I can't promise that an adhesive is gonna stick to old 
carpet backing and old adhesive. Not worth it, not the risk I'm willing to take. I want this boat to last 20 plus years when I'm done with it. So the boards come up. I think we've drilled that one into the ground. We've lost in some spots, we lost plywood. In some spots, we, lost, or we left carpet backing. This can be pretty tricky if you get a lot of carpet backing or even sections like up here where there's actually a chunk of carpet. Really hard to find your uh, bolts or your screws. So keep that in mind. You might be searching, you might be digging to find them. These are self tappers all the way. Just a big Phillips number three head self tapper. Sometimes they look like they're just gonna come right out. And then you realize after sitting under that carpet in the wet, even though they're typically either stainless or uh, like a zinc or maybe a galvanized, some sort of treated to uh, prevent rust and corrosion. Sometimes it's just, you start to hit them and they just strip right out. I mean, no matter how much pressure, no matter using the perfect size bit and everything, they just tend to strip out. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, we'll show you how we approach it both ways. I'm hoping for my sake that they're just gonna come out, but I'll show you how to troubleshoot it if you have stubborn ones too. So I'm gonna go ahead and start zipping these out. We'll see how it goes. I got lucky there, this one came right out. No idea how this is gonna go. We gotta remember there's about what, one, two, three, four, four to five on each one. And then the seams have a whole bunch. So here's a good example of what we're up against. The seam here, this one's quite a bit rustier. That one broke, so that could be good or bad. If it breaks you know, in the wood and it's still grabbing, you're gonna have some trouble, but this is pretty common too. Nice keep the pry bar. Sometimes that or self tapping tip just kind of gets buried in the metal. So that just gives me a little pressure up. We're three for three on getting these out. I think it's gonna go pretty smooth. Knock on wood, just jinx the crap out of myself. Uh, but let me show you what we do when they're not so happy and they may be stripped out. Two options here. If you have a, a screw that's stripped out or being stubborn, you can take an angle grinder in there and try to knock the head off. Sometimes that's harder, especially when they're countersunk like this. Uh, the other one that you might see would be an elevator bolt, which is basically a carriage bolt, but it's a totally flat head and you might even see a carriage bolt on an old one. What I've done is I've just taken a whole bit, whole cutting bit, and removed the actual drill bit out of the middle. And what that's gonna allow me to do is get out just on the outside. I wanna go just a little bit bigger than my screw. Once you get it going, then you can power through. I'm just gonna take that down to the metal. I gotta pop the rest of these screws off this front board, and then I can show you what it looks like. It's gonna leave this little plug, but I can zip that off with an angle grinder later. Not a big deal. So I'm gonna keep taking all these screws out, uh, and then we'll just show you in time lapse, removing, I don't know, 100 screws. Uh, and then we can take the wood off, clean everything up, and get it ready for the new deck. I've got the screws pulled out of this first board. This is what it's gonna look like if you had to use that hole cutting bit around. So you're just gonna leave a little plug, three quarter inch tall, and I can go back and take that off with my angle grinder flush to the metal before I get this board out. This was a funny dimension board. So this wasn't a full 48 inches. This is an eight foot wide boat, but this wasn't a full 48 inches. So I'm gonna make sure that I take note. I'm gonna measure that because when I go to redeck this boat, I'm gonna need to run it through the table saw or use a circular saw to cut the proper length. I could just lay that on another board and template it and draw a line, that's fine too. But we just measure it, cut a new board and go from there. And there's a good chance too that you're gonna have some funny shaped boards in the back of the boat, especially if you have that cut out around the motor in front of the motor. So just save those pieces, make your measurements, use them as templates, however it works for you. That's gonna save you a ton of time when it comes to putting your new deck on. I realized I would potentially get some flack from all the chemical engineers, whoever out there, about the aluminum and treated plywood corrosion factors. And this is my approach on it. I trust that Harris, who's been in business for, I don't know, 30, 40 years, still making beautiful boats. This is treated wood. This is green wood. It's treated. 
I trust that their engineers over the years have, <laughs> that rhymed, they have taken the time to know what is best for aluminum cross members and plywood, what's gonna last the longest, be the safest, give you the, le the least amount of hassle because they don't wanna have to warranty this stuff or lose their reputation of building nice boats. That's my take on it. I'm trusting what the manufacturers are doing and icy treated wood from the manufacturers. That's what I'm gonna keep using. I just know some people are gonna say something about their boat corroded through in a year or two or whatever, but that's an unfortunate circumstance. There's probably more variables there than just treated wood and aluminum. We don't know what those are, but again, I'm gonna go with what the big names and the manufacturers are doing, and we're gonna stick to that and keep trying to make these boats just like they do new from the factory. This boat's 25 years old, it's been in fresh water. Treated wood is sat on this aluminum, and that is the extent of the corrosion. It's like a hundredth of a millimeter of pitting. That's gonna take decades, hunt centuries, um, 500 years, something like that, to wear through. If you're in saltwater or a marina where there's electrolysis happening, maybe faster, but it basically just leaves a white residue and very, very minor pitting. Not something that I'm concerned with in terms of if this boat lasts another 25, 50 years or more, we're still not gonna have any structural problems unless it's taken to salt water or some sort of weird corrosive environment. Hopefully your boat has tar tape, this black tar tape here. Uh, and that, what that does is it goes between where two boards meet and it keeps water from splashing up between the boards. With carpet, that would allow water to get underneath and soak through. With any plywood, it's gonna pretty much increase your rotting rate if it stays wet all the time. So the tar tape seals up that seam keeps the water from getting between with vinyl. If you didn't have enough glue down or something happened, you might get a bubble underneath where water gathers and it's kind of this unsightly bubble of water. And then how do you fix it? Good question. So tar tape, we tar tape every single boat that we do, unless it's the U channel. In that case, there's not much tar is gonna do in there. I guess you could silicone between the two boards if you wanted to when you uh, squish them together. But I'm gonna show you this is the last part of the teardown. I'm gonna show you how I remove that tar tape with a torch in case you haven't seen our other videos. I'm gonna hit from underneath. This is a S channel or Z channel. I'm gonna get it hot, just the aluminum. Remember this tar tape is sort of flammable, so that's why I don't hit it from the top because it's gonna catch on fire. But I just work my way along here. And if I get it hot, this stuff will just kind of keep peeling right off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. You have a firmer scraper that helps quite a bit, but just a beefy paint scraper works. And that helps you get the plywood that's stuck to it off too. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, comment with questions or what you wanna see more of or how we help you. That helps us out a whole lot. And if we saved you a trip to the marina or paying somebody else to do it and allowed you to do it yourself at home, remember we have our account at buymeacoffee.com backslash Tom's Tunes. You can contribute to our channel there as well. Thanks for watching.